Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a story that takes us back to the reign of King Richard I, a time vastly different from ours. Imagine a world where the roads were so bad and filled with robbers that traveling was a perilous adventure. And the country? It was a maze of large forests and parks, teeming with deer. It's in this setting that our story unfolds, featuring the legendary Robin Hood. Robin wasn't just any folk hero, he was born in the village of Loxley, Nottinghamshire. His father, a master of the crossbow, and his mother, who had a brother named Gamewell of Great Gamewell Hall, laid the foundation for Robin's adventurous life. One fine day, when Robin was about 13, his mother proposed a visit to Gamewell Hall to celebrate Christmas with her brother. Robin, dressed in his finest green attire, armed with a sword and dagger, rode with his mother to the hall. Upon arrival, they were greeted with the warmest welcome by Squire Gamewell. The next day, a grand feast was prepared, but with a twist, no one could taste the ale until they sang a Christmas carol. This led to an uproar of joy, singing, and merriment that filled the hall with an unforgettable cheer. But the highlight of the visit came when Little John, known for his tricks and games, entertained the guests. Robin Hood, not to be outdone, showcased his own skills, much to the delight of Squire Gamewell, who then made Robin an offer he couldn't refuse, to live with him and inherit his estate. Robin agreed, on the condition that Little John would serve as his companion. However, fate took a grim turn when Squire Gamewell fell ill during Robin's absence. In those days, the country followed the Roman Catholic faith, and a convent of priests from Fountain Abbey played a significant role in people's lives. One monk, seizing the opportunity, convinced the ailing squire to sign over his estate to Fountain Abbey, leaving Robin out in the cold. Robin, upon hearing of his uncle's condition, rushed back, only to find Squire Gamewell had passed away just a quarter hour before his arrival. The monks wasted no time in claiming the estate, leaving Robin dispossessed and thrust into the world to forge his own path. And so, our story of Robin Hood takes a twist, folks. Finding himself dispossessed and without a livelihood, Robin Hood did what many in his shoes wouldn't even dare to imagine. He didn't just sit back. Instead, he rallied a group of young men, all as unaccustomed to work and as impoverished as himself, and led them into a life of adventure in Sherwood Forest, near Nottingham. This wasn't just any merry band. They were exceptional marksmen, their crossbows never missing a target. But a man cannot live on meat alone, and soon Robin and his merry men turned to robbing those who dared pass through Sherwood Forest. Yet, despite their turn to banditry, Robin Hood and his company had rule. They dressed in uniform, Robin in scarlet, his men in green. And although they were robbers, Robin Hood had a code. He became a folk hero, not just for his exploits, but for his generosity. He robbed the rich, those who, in his eyes, did not use their wealth wisely, particularly targeting those who were part of the same system that had robbed him of his inheritance. The poor, however, had nothing to fear. Robin was known to give rather than take from them. Women were off limits, and Robin always sided with the underdog. His reputation grew. He was the most gentle and generous thief of all. Robin's love for mischief knew no bounds. One day, he decided to trade places with a butcher, donning the man's apron and coat in exchange for his own scarlet uniform. Robin, now in disguise, ventured into Nottingham, undercutting all other butchers in the market with his absurdly low prices. His actions baffled the local butchers, who invited him to dine, unknowing of his true identity. The dinner was hosted by none other than the Sheriff of Nottingham, who, intrigued by Robin's apparent folly, saw an opportunity to profit. The Sheriff, lured by the promise of buying horned beasts from Robin, found himself deep in Sherwood Forest, face to face with the very man he feared most. Robin's ruse was complete when he revealed his horned beasts were actually deer from the forest, and soon the sheriff was surrounded by Robin's band of merry men, all dressed in green. The sheriff, now a guest at Robin's table, was treated to a feast before Robin Hood generously relieved him of 300 pounds. The sheriff was then sent on his way, with Robin Hood's laughter echoing behind him. One fine day in Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood's attention was captured by a young man of striking appearance, adorned in splendid attire and filled with joy, skipping across the meadow while singing. However, the very next day, 
Robin encountered the same young man in stark contrast to his former mirth. His luxurious garments were nowhere to be seen, his hair unkempt, and with every step he uttered deep sighs of despair, lamenting his misfortune. Intrigued, Robin dispatched one of his men to bring the young man to him for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. What weighs so heavily on your heart, young man? Robin inquired, noting the drastic change from joy to sorrow in just a day. The young man, revealing a ring from his purse, shared his tale of woe. He had been on the brink of marrying his beloved, a maiden he had wooed for seven long years, only to find out she was to be wed to another that very morning. Robin, probing further, asked if the maiden truly loved him. Alan Adale, as he was known, affirmed her love had been pledged to him countless times, yet Robin questioned the worth of a love so easily swayed. Alan Adale defended her, attributing her change of heart not to fickleness, but to the coercion of marrying a wealthy, albeit decrepit knight, under the stern demands of her parents. The wedding, Alan disclosed, was to be solemnized in their parish church, mere miles away, with the ceremony officiated by the Bishop of Hereford, the knight's brother. Without further ado, Robin shed his iconic scarlet attire for a harper's disguise, instructing twenty-four of his men to discreetly follow. He then made his way into the church, surprising the bishop who was donning his ceremonial robes. Offering his services as a harper, Robin was welcomed by the bishop, keen on a musical addition to the festivities. As the bride and groom entered, the disparity between them was stark. The old knight's frailty contrasted sharply with the maiden's radiant beauty. Robin Hood, unable to stand idly by, halted the proceedings, challenging the propriety of the match and empowering the bride to choose her true heart's desire. With a signal, his archers, led by Alan Adale, made a dramatic entrance. Presented with a choice, the maiden chose Alan, her true love, over wealth and obligation. The bishop protested, citing the legal and traditional requirements for marriage, but Robin was undeterred. Disguising little John as the efficient, they proceeded with the marriage right there in the church, much to the bishop's dismay. Following the ceremony, a grand feast in Sherwood Forest celebrated the union of Alan Adale and his bride, marking the beginning of a lifelong friendship with Robin Hood. In the era of Robin Hood, bishops, aligned with the Pope in Rome, wielded considerable power. Robin's disdain for the clergy, especially those who abused their positions, was well known, a sentiment reciprocated by the Bishop of Hereford. The bishops' repeated attempts to capture Robin and bring him to justice were fueled not only by their ideological clashes, but also by personal grievances stemming from Robin's interference in the wedding. One day, as Robin strolled through the forest, the distant sound of horses alerted him to the approach of his adversary, the Bishop of Hereford, accompanied by his men. Realizing the imminent threat, Robin relied on his agility and wit to evade capture, a testament to his enduring struggle against those who sought his downfall. In his flight from the Bishop of Hereford, Robin Hood stumbled upon a secluded cottage inhabited by an elderly woman living in solitude. Desperate, Robin implored her assistance to evade capture. Recognizing him as the outlaw Robin Hood, the woman, grateful for past kindnesses, agreed to help, recalling how Robin and Little John had previously aided her. They quickly exchanged attire, Robin adopting the woman's garb and she, his iconic green and weaponry, to throw the bishop's party off his scent. Robin, now disguised, made his way back to his band, narrowly avoiding an arrow from one of his own, mistaken for a witch in his unfamiliar attire. Assuring his men of his identity, he prepared for the bishop's unwitting arrival. Meanwhile, the bishop, misled by the old woman now dressed in Robin's clothes, believed he was close to capturing his quarry. They encountered Robin's men in the forest, the bishop none the wiser. Upon realizing the deception, the bishop found himself not the captor, but a guest at Robin's table in the heart of Sherwood Forest. The meal, though humble by the bishop's standards, was rich with the spoils of the forest, and the day concluded with the bishop coerced into a merry dance, much to the amusement of Robin Hood and his merry men. After an eventful day that saw the Bishop of Hereford departing from Robin Hood's hospitality richer in experience but poorer in gold, Robin and his merry men indulged in a day of games and competition under the lush canopy of Sherwood. 
the green leaves and vibrant flowers of summer served as a backdrop to their revelry. Robin Hood, filled with pride and confidence in his unmatched skills, challenged the prowess of anyone who might dare to equal him in archery, staff fighting, or hunting. Will Scarlet, a relative and member of Robin's band who harbored his own ambitions and a bit of resentment towards Robin, especially after witnessing Robin's disguise as an old woman, suggested a formidable opponent. He spoke of a friar in Fountain Abbey, a place bitterly connected to Robin's past, hinting at a challenge Robin could not ignore. Despite the distaste the mention of Fountain Abbey aroused in him, Robin's adventurous spirit was piqued. Determined to meet this friar, Robin Hood set off alone to Fountain Dale. There, he encountered a robust friar by the water's edge who exuded the confidence and physical prowess that Will Scarlet had promised. Robin demanded the friar carry him across the water, a request that was silently complied with, sparking a series of crossings where each tested the other's patience and strength. The contest escalated when the friar, in the middle of their third crossing, decided to toss Robin into the water, challenging him to swim to safety. Once on shore, Robin acknowledged the friar's worth as an equal in physical contest. He proposed the friar join his band of outlaws, promising a life of freedom and joy in the forest. Conversely, the friar suggested Robin abandon his rebellious lifestyle for the peace and respectability of convent life. Yet neither could sway the other to forsake his chosen path. With mutual respect, they parted ways, each returning to his life, a life that for Robin Hood was full of danger and defiance of the law. Robin Hood, having lived the life of an outlaw for several years, found himself yearning for a quieter existence back in the village of his birth. Amidst these contemplative thoughts, he decided to make a grand gesture to Queen Eleanor, the mother of King Richard I, by presenting her with a bounty of riches he had acquired. The Queen, impressed and grateful for Robin's gift, silently vowed to extend her friendship to him and his band, should she remain alive for the next year. An opportunity arose when King Richard organized a grand archery contest at his court, inviting the finest bowmen from his guards and army. Seeing a chance to fulfill her silent promise to Robin, Queen Eleanor dispatched her favorite page, Richard Partington, to Sherwood Forest with an invitation for Robin Hood and his men to represent her as champions in the upcoming contest. On the day of the match, the king's bowmen, esteemed as the best archers in England, faced off against the Queen's champions, led by Robin Hood and his men in disguise. With the stakes set by King Richard and bets heavily favoring the King's archers, Queen Eleanor sought to rally support for her team. She first approached Sir Robert Lee, who respectfully declined, and then the Bishop of Hereford, Robin Hood's old adversary, who also refused to wager on her side. However, the bishop eagerly bet all the money in his purse on the king's men, a sum which Robin Hood matched with his own. But before the contest began, Queen Eleanor sought a boon from King Richard, ensuring that her champions would not face the king's wrath regardless of the outcome and would be allowed to remain in court for the duration of the match and safely depart afterward. King Richard consented to his mother's request. The competition proved the superiority of Robin Hood and his men's archery skills as they effortlessly hit every target and won the contest, much to the dismay of the Bishop of Hereford, who recognized the victorious archers as Robin Hood and his band. Although King Richard expressed regret at not having recognized them sooner, he honored his agreement, celebrating their victory with a noble feast and allowing them to leave with honor and their winnings. King Richard often found his thoughts returning to Robin Hood and his merry men. The king, a great enthusiast of archery himself, admired the tales of their generosity, courage, and honorable conduct. He wished to turn these outlaws into loyal subjects, seeing in them a potential glory for his court. Thus, he devised a scheme to meet Robin Hood again. Disguised as monks, King Richard and twelve of his courtiers ventured into Sherwood Forest. Robin Hood, mistaking them for wealthy targets, intended to rob them. Upon confronting the tallest among them, whom he presumed to be the abbot, Robin announced his intention. However, the moment King Richard mentioned they were on the king's business, Robin Hood immediately showed reverence for King Richard, highlighting his own code of ethics, which spared the honest and targeted the corrupt. 
Inviting the disguised king and his entourage to dine with him, Robin Hood showcased his hospitality, declaring that for King Richard's sake, he would not take a penny from them even if they possessed untold riches. After dining, King Richard, still in disguise, inquired what Robin would do if he could secure a pardon from the king. Robin Hood expressed his deep desire to abandon his outlaw life, praising King Richard and expressing a heartfelt wish to serve him faithfully. Revealing his true identity, King Richard offered Robin Hood and his men a royal pardon, acknowledging their bravery and potential for loyal service. He acknowledged their past should not define their future, provided they commit to righteous behavior henceforth. Overwhelmed by the king's forgiveness and the promise of a new beginning, Robin Hood and his men pledged their allegiance to King Richard, marking a significant turn in their lives from outlaws of Sherwood to the king's loyal subjects. And there you have it, folks, the legendary tale of Robin Hood, from his days as an outlaw in Sherwood Forest to his redemption and acceptance into King Richard's favor. It's a story that captures the essence of adventure, loyalty, and the eternal struggle for justice. Robin Hood's journey from the green woods of Sherwood to the royal courts of England reminds us all that change is possible and that even the greatest outlaws can find redemption. If you've been captivated by the tales of bravery, cunning, and the spirit of rebellion, then don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with friends and family, and subscribe to our channel for more incredible stories from history and legend. Your support helps us bring these timeless tales to life, inspiring adventures and dreams of a better world. Before you go, let us know in the comments below. What do you think about Robin Hood's transformation? And who would you like to hear about next on our journey through the annals of history and myth? Thank you for joining us on this epic adventure. Until next time, keep the spirit of adventure alive. And remember, the legend of Robin Hood teaches us that no matter our past, there's always a path to redemption and a chance to make a difference in the world. Farewell, and see you in the next video.